Ya. So we'll go ahead and get started. Thank you all for coming tonight. My name is Chuck Cazetto. I'm the district superintendent. Appreciate you coming to learn a little bit more about the levy. One uh, quick announcement and a couple introductions and we'll get started. The announcement is we are recording this and streaming this live tonight. So what we'd like to do, if possible, is hold your questions until the end of the presentation and then we'll stay around as long as you want and go back to whatever slides you want to answer those questions. And then second, a couple introductions. I'd like to introduce a couple school board members. Rand Wilhelmsen, our school board president, right here. Deb Krishna Dawson, one of our school board members back there. Uh, so now let me introduce the staff that will be kind of going through the levy information with you tonight. Just walking through the door is Kathy Wade Miller. She's our director of community outreach. On my left is John Helwick. He's our assistant superintendent for learning and teaching. Dan Gregory is our assistant superintendent for K-12 education and school improvement. And then to start us off is our chief financial officer, Karen Anderson. So Karen, I'll turn it over to you. Welcome, welcome. It's nice to have a few people in the audience. Um, tonight we're going to give you some information about our continuing educational programs and operations, parentheses, M&O levy. Um, we want to talk a little bit about the title right from the get-go. Um, over time, this used to be um, an M&O maintenance and operations levy and people were misled thinking that it was just for facilities and so over time as school districts became more dependent on their levies to help run basic education because we aren't fully funded by the state they started to identify why we really need these levies and this is really it's to maintain and operate our current programs, our educational programs, along with maintaining our facilities. So over time, we have changed the title. Um, the last couple of times, we've called it the ed Educational Programs and Operations Levy. And this is a continuance because this is basically a renewal of what we've already done. The current four-year levy expires in 2016 and we're asking to renew it for another four years and to continue it on. Thus the title, so to explain that a little bit. With the um, levy proposal, um, we wanted to talk about estimated tax rates. Um, currently, the, S the tax rate for 2016 is $2.30 per $1,000 of assessed value. That is what the current levy is, is costing our taxpayers. When we took our proposals for levy amounts to the board, they massaged that and they took into consideration the fact that we have 75% of our population is retired folks. People that don't have kids in schools and are more on fixed incomes. And we want to make those people aware that we're trying not to gouge our taxpayers. We're trying to run our business, maintain what we're doing currently, and until the state fully funds basic education, we need dollars to continue doing what we're doing. So we took our current year, our current levy spending plan, we inflated it for uh, future costs, what we anticipate for future costs, and future needs. And based on that, we devise the dollar amounts that we need and backing in our estimated assessed value for each year, we come up with these tax rates. So we purposely downgraded the dollar amount that we're going to ask for in 2017, starting with a lower tax rate. And 
hopefully projected <coughs> that we're going to have a lower tax rate for the next four years. The levy covers 24% of our operating budget. Um, the other 67 or 76% is state and local or state and federal funding. Um, we know that um, there's a lot of questions out there about the <coughs> McCleary and whether or not the legislature is going to fully fund basic education. At this point, we don't know what's going to happen. So we are very dependent on these levy funds in order to keep um, <coughs> doing the things that we're doing in our schools. So if so, with 24% riding, um, this. This levy is really critical to our day-to-day -day operations in um, Peninsula School District. We're going to talk a little bit about how we spend the levy dollars, and we've kind of categorized those, and we'll give you some examples of how we're using current levy dollars and how we propose to spend them in the future. 78% of our levy supports staffing. It's either classified staffing or certificated. Um, the state does not fully fund all of our staff. Um, with, so our staff that it, our staffing costs about two thirds of our staffing costs for certificated employees are covered with state and federal funds. The rest is covered with um, levy. For our classified, only about half of our classified costs are covered with um, state and federal funds. <coughs> One of the categories that we have for safety and security is safety and security. We have a lot of expenditures that we use levy dollars for. Um, Kathy and Dan, do you want to give some examples? Sure. You want me to go ahead? Sure. Um, Having uh, safe and secure campuses for our students and staff is one of our board goals. It's one of our highest priorities. Uh, for students to learn well, we want them to feel safe, and for staff to do their, the work that we want them to do, um, they need to feel safe as well. Um, recently, a couple summers ago, we had a uh, assessment of all of safety for all of our campuses. We did a, did a, that person who did that assessment for us identified some areas in which we can improve in terms of safety for our students. Um, recently, through levy dollars, we have put access control systems in all eight of our elementary schools. One actually existed at Purdy Elementary, but we put that one within the same system as the other seven. So now at all eight of our elementary schools, we have access control systems. And at our four middle schools and here at Henderson Bay High School, we also have access control systems on our front doors. And what that means is when school starts, those front doors lock and they remain locked until, until the end of the school day. Anybody wanting to access the building during that time through the front doors pushes a button and um, their picture comes up. There's a camera near that button and their picture comes up and people in the office have the opportunity to identify them and ask them what their business is. And if they're not a threat and they're people that we know and they're coming in to do business that we, that we um, support, then we buzz them into the door. But what it does is it provides one more barrier, one more layer of safety for our students and staff. Um, all of those systems are live at our eight elementary schools. They have been installed at our middle schools in Henderson Bay and will be live soon. Um, additionally, we've uh, done some security camera work and tied those into our technology system as well. Going forward, we want to increase those systems, we want to maintain the systems we have and increase those systems as well. Um, our work in those two areas is really in its infancy and we really need to continue to expand. Um, one of the things when we, when we started this project was we wanted to make sure, number one, the systems that we chose were compatible with our technology network, and number two, they were expandable because we wanted to do it in phases. Um, one other important resource we have to keep our students and staff safe as well as our campuses is we have a contract with the Pierce County Sheriff's Office and they provide what's called a school resource officer for us and levy funds pay for us to have that school resource officer accessible to all 15 of our buildings anytime throughout the day. And so those are very important safety and security measures 
Kathy has done a lot of coordination um, in terms of emergency management and training of staff, so I'll let her comment on those two things. Um, we have two things that we're especially excited about. We work really closely with um, Pierce County Department of Emergency Management to make sure that um, what we're giving our staff is up-to-date best practice um, in pretty much all hazards or, or all possible concerns that could come up. And our, with the help of our consultant and the DEM people, um, we're working to comprehensively train and retrain all of our staff um, more than one time a year to make sure that um, people are prepared and know what to do um, in a variety of incidents and know how to keep kids safe and also know how to prepare the kids for any type of incident. We routinely drill, we routinely practice, and um, you know do everything we can so if there is a bad day, we are um, ready to go. Um, one last thing that came out of our security assessment that you'll probably see as you look at any of our schools is we've really worked hard to um, work with our maintenance department to trim trees so our sight lines are good, so we can see what's going on, we can see who's coming and going, things are well lit, our fences are repaired, holes in, holes in the fences are no more, and um, we're just we're really excited about visible changes that we were able to do um, with, with existing resources through our levy funds. Another thing, just so that you're aware, we have a security plan and we're working in phases, so future levy dollars will also be um, dedicated towards security and expanding these plans and carrying them out. We have a category maintenance projects. This is actually a line item in our levy spending plan for maintenance projects, and that could be minim smaller projects, you know, fifty, sixty thousand um, dollars, but it could be larger projects. Um, we don't have capital funding or resources to um, charge capital projects fund for some of the major, big um, projects. So we're we're basically doing smaller projects on a smaller scale. Some of our roofs that need to be repaired, we're not able to repair the whole roof, so we're we're repairing the significant patches that need to be done or sections that need to be done. Um, we don't have the funding to do an entire roof. An example, um, several years ago we repaired um, the middle part of the discovery roof. Um, there are two more sections of that metal roof that need to be replaced and we've been monitoring them and making sure that we don't have leaks, but at some point we are going to have to replace the other two sections. And so we're monitoring that, and it may be that because it costs so much to repair those metal roofs, we may do one section and then the following section the next year. So we're monitoring those types of things. We're identifying projects and trying to do repair projects that will not just be a quick fix and a temporary fix, but that will last and, and prolong the life of the building or or that piece of the building um, to protect and basically keep it going. Um, so we have a lot of projects each year that we line up and as things come up, sometimes those projects get bumped down a little bit and we have to take, we have to address the, criti the more critical needs. Um, so we do have the projects that, and they're all funded through levy. Um, another piece of maintenance is that um, we have maintenance workers, HVAC um, workers. Um, those are also supported with levy funds. About half of our classified staff are supported with um, levy funding. Another area, curriculum and programs. Uh, John, I think, was going to share some specifics under this category. So um, one of the big expenses in curriculum and instruction is textbooks. And especially with new standards in all of our major core subject areas, reading, writing, math, and uh, coming up science. Um, technology has kind of changed the textbook world. It used to be you know, the physical textbooks that you had when you went to school. Um, more and more of those are becoming outdated and will soon be completely outdated. Uh, instead, you access the same information on a device, whether it's an iPad or a PC or a Chromebook. And the, the, the great thing about that is, when you used to buy a set of encyclopedias or a, or a world history book, they were outdated as soon as you bought them. 
now. Those are updated, they're interactive, they have multimedia. Um, and so even though we're not going to be buying these big textbooks anymore, the costs are still there for the licenses to access these textbooks on, in a virtual way. And those, th those licenses are paid for by our, by our levy. Um, and it's not just the core areas, we also support our arts. And so for things like art supplies and musical instruments, um, many of our musical instruments are rented by the families, but for harder to rent instruments, we do make purchases and replacements for those. We also have some pr programs that we think are really cool for kids. Uh, one of them is called AVID. That's a program designed to help support students who uh, have the potential to go to college, but might just need a little extra support to get there. And we've just introduced that program at two of our schools this year, and we'll be um, making a pitch to the board to ex expand that program. Project Lead the Way is a um, STEM, which stands for Science, Technology, Engineering, and Math. And it's a program that trains teachers and provides curriculum in some areas that are a little less traditional than your normal science and math tracks. Um, a couple of examples are introduction to biomed and human body systems. And uh, those allow students to access those types of classes that might not have been uh, as interested in some of our more traditional math and science track classes. And, and just in supporting our graduation rates, uh, the state has um, pushed the graduation credit requirement up to 24, and our district and board supported that. Uh, that doesn't give students, students much wiggle room, so we have to put in a lot of supports, including more summer school, after school programs, um, some flexibility in for kids to do credit recovery, and all of those things are funded by the levy as well. So those are a few things in curriculum and programs that, that our levy supports. Technology is an important factor and it really it, it really flows well out of curriculum. John talked uh, previously about online textbooks. Um, more and more our students are accessing the materials they need to learn through online sources as, appo as opposed to out of textbooks. Um, also, uh, several years ago, the state started to require that all of the mandated testing grades 3 through 10 be done on computer. And so all of those students need to test on computer within a particular window on the calendar. Um, however, the state did not provide any funding to support the technology necessary for students to do that. And so several years ago, we started buying several Chromebook carts, 30 to 33 computers in a cart that you could plug into a wall, charge overnight, and students use during the day. Um, as we purchase several of those Chromebook cards, the first couple of years, we'd take them to one school, the students would do their required testing, we'd pack them up and we'd run them over to another school, those students would do their testing, so it was a shuffle of carts around the district just to get the testing, the state required testing done. Um, we've been continually supporting the idea of students using that more, using those more and more on a daily basis for their regular classroom work and that was required more and more devices and so right now on the key peninsula we actually have um, all of our students grades three through five on what we call a one-to-one -one setup so each one of those students grades three through five has their own laptop and they'll come in in the morning and access their laptop kind of like hang up your backpack and your jacket and pick up your laptop. Um, we also have that same situation for sixth graders at Key Peninsula Middle School. We hope to continue to expand that because that is the means by which our students as they go through K-12 and beyond, that's what we have to prepare them for. That's what their real world is going to be like, not only educationally, but likely in whatever career they choose. And so having levy support for the, for the uh, continuation and su of support as well as expansion of those kind of things is very necessary for us to move forward. Um, we talked about assessment and I'll have John refer back to some of the software associated with some of the curriculum adoptions that we've done as well. So yeah, we know that the state testing is done online but so is a lot of our just curriculum based assessments. So some of those um, types of online textbooks that I talk about uh, that's not just accessing information, but they also often are doing their assessments on those uh, devices. I think we have, uh, Ron, you can correct me, but around 700 plus total devices in the district now. And again, it'd be nice seven, to keep seven, seven thousand. Seven thousand, that's what I meant. Seven thousand, <laughs> sorry. Um, and 
uh, and, and again, those are important for all of the day-to-day -day, uh, teaching and assessing that, that kids do in addition to the state testing that Dan referenced. And staffing-wise, I don't know if we want to hit that later or hit it now, but yeah, it's one and a half. One and a half of our staff for technology is funded by basic ed. Uh, we have 14, I believe, total staff in the technology department, and so 12 and a half of those are funded by the levy. So when you think about all of those devices out, all of the support and infrastructure with our networking um, and with the security that you saw, all of those things are supported by our technology staff, uh, and that staff is, is funded almost entirely by the levy. I just wanted to make a comment. Um, back in 2003, we passed a bond, a $45 million bond, and with that, we bought a significant number of devices that were put into schools. Those are all obsolete at this point in time, and we have been removing them from classrooms and from um, libraries and from labs. And with the levy funding, we've set up a replacement cycle to where we couldn't do everything at once. And what we realized is that we can't buy everything at once because then it goes dead at, all at once. So we purposely have started this cycle so that we're buying a certain number of Chrome cards each year so that we're cycling through and that hopefully in five to seven years, we'll be back and cycling through when the, the old Chromebooks go out of existence or are no longer usable. And then we've, we've created, hopefully, a sustainable um, way of providing technology, updated technology within our schools. So I just kind of wanted to throw that out a little bit. Athletics. Um, it's very important that our students not only learn in the classroom throughout the day and have good role models as teachers and administrators, but we also want them involved in positive things outside of school. And some of those things outside of the school day are our are, are school athletics. Um, there they uh, get a tremendous amount of exercise depending upon what, it is, what, uh, what um, activity they're doing. But they also interact, learn to work as a team, and have very positive role models in their coaches. Athletics are funded a, a, a very large portion by the levy. We're talking about coaches stipends, we're talking about equipment for the different sports, um, we're talking about transportation to and from games, whether that's at the middle level where they travel within the district or whether that's at the high school level whether, where they travel within their different leagues. Um, but a very large portion of that is, is levy funded. And again, um, we want all of our students to be well-rounded students. This is one way they access that. They also, again, learn to work as a team and work with their coaches who are really fine role models for them. So athletics is another important component of, of our levy funding. Professional development. So if you think about kind of, like, let's look it through the eyes of a math teacher. So I've got new standards to teach and the standards are more rigorous. So I've got to figure out how I'm going to get my students over an even higher bar than before. I'm doing it with a new curriculum that I need to get familiar with. That new curriculum is often done no longer out of a textbook, but on, out of a device, and I need to use the technology to help the students get there. That's a lot of change for our teachers, and they need time to, to be trained and be familiar with those systems so that they can be, help our kids be successful. And it used to be that the state gave us some training days to help with that. They no longer do. There's zero training days that are funded by the state. So those training days come out of our levy. Uh, whether it's before school gets started, we have some, a day during the year when, when teachers are trained, and also um, we do some sub-release uh, so that teachers can um, come and work with our trainers. Um, we have five uh, teachers on special assignment, which are um, <coughs> teachers, excuse me, who are released to help train, and, and those uh, facilitators are specialists, whether it's math or elementary ed, highly capable technology. We have some uh, trainers that help do plan those trainings and, and um, help our teachers uh, as they are trying to adapt to all of this change, and those facilitators are also paid by the levy. Um, 
And you know, each building, they really look at their data every year and they'd say, okay, we really need to focus on maybe seventh grade math or whatever it is this year. And uh, the, the training that those teachers need to help ramp up in that area, um, those that we refer to as school improvement plans, those are also funded by the levy. Certificated staffing. I'll jump in and just give a description and invite anybody. I mean, we all interact with our certificated staff all the time. Um, who are our certificated staff members? Oftentimes people go, okay, those are your teachers. But it goes beyond teachers. It's our teachers. It's our counselors. It's uh, for students who need occupational therapy or physical therapy. We have those services available to them. School nurses, administrators. Um, Approximately two-thirds of the costs, salaries, and benefits for certificated staff is covered by the state. The rest is covered a little bit by uh, federal, but primarily most of the other third uh, are levy funded. And again, that salaries and benefits for a wide variety of staff, one-third of those costs are, are covered through levy funding. Um, I can have John maybe talk, or, or Karen, talk specifically about some of the things related to the programs around those. So um, the, the, some of the staff that um, Dan mentioned, in addition to that, um, we also added, needed to add some additional staff this year as we ramped up from four day a week uh, kindergarten to five day a week. And the state um, for five of our schools only pays for two and a half days a week. So we're helping to fund kindergarten and the staffing that goes with that. Also, we have uh, we want our principals and all of our teachers to be working on getting kids to standards, to helping students learn. And sometimes behavior of students can get in the way. So our counselors are helping with that, our school psychs, but we also have deans of students in our building these year, uh, over the last couple of years we've added some deans of students who deal primarily with the behavior issues so that the other staff can, can be working on the learning aspects. And it's really important when we talk about salaries and benefits and approximately a third of that is covered. It's really important for us to keep the best people possible at the front of our classrooms in front of those kids. And so without having that kind of support, it really makes it difficult for us to be competitive in an already dwindling market for teachers. We already have a teacher shortage. And so it's really important for us to to be able to attract the best, but not just attract the best, but keep the best people in front of our students. <laughs> classified staffing. Um, for classified staffing, um, about half of the cost for staff for classified staffing is covered by state. The other is covered under federal or um, levy. Classified staff involve a variety of People. It could be grounds, it could be maintenance, it could be our paras in classrooms, it could be our front desk people in the schools, it could be people up at the district office. Um, it, there's a variety of um, classified staffing across the board um, that could be funded um, with levy funding and with state funding. So um, about half of the funding that we receive from from four classified staffing is from the state, and the rest is from other categories, either federal or local. So again, 24% of our operating budget, day-to-day -day operating budget, is, is funded through the levy. And until the state fully funds basic education, we are reliant on this. Um, and the goal of McCleary for the state is to take away that reliance so that we are not asking for as much. We're only asking for what we might want to do over and above basic education. Um, it should be an excess levy that we're asking for, and it's not. Right now, it's a, it's a basic, it's to help provide basic education, and until the state fully funds basic education, we still need local support. So are there any questions at this point? Do you have a smile on your face? No. <laughs> I got some questions. Okay. okay. 
So, uh, can we go back to the second slide? And what is the 2016 amount that you're collecting? $23 million, a little over. Okay. 2017 amount? $23 million. Okay. So the gap between that $2.30 and the $2.19 is specifically because of the increased assessment on the properties in your harbor. Yep. Correct. Okay. Yes. So uh, I'm struggling with this because I'm having people come up to me in grocery stores saying you got to pass this levy because tax, the rates are going to go down, tax rates are going to go down with this levy. And it's, it's not accurate because on your 2020, I believe you're at $27 million. 2020, 2020? Yes, yeah, 2020, yeah. Yes. And uh, again, that is based off Pierce County's projections over the next seven years. I guess they go out four years mm -hmm. plus three, yeah, so seven years. Uh, in order to get those numbers down, the board didn't do anything to get those numbers down. It was a direct derivative of the county assessment values going up. My personal home went up $100,000 this year. So uh, I think that this is really misleading, and you see people running around town, your tax rates go down, the tax rates can go down, you're gonna save money, you're gonna save money. I, I find it totally offensive. And, uh, and, and I would ask the board to stop that communication, and uh, because I think when people get their tax bill, and they're, and they're paying more in taxes because their assessments are going up, they may not be paying as, well, they're paying the same thing for the school district. Excuse me. They're paying the same thing for the school district, but their tax rates are their their tax bill is going to go up. We're never going to pass a bond in this town if we can't trust what you are telling us. And when you're saying the tax rates are going down, and every mom in town is running around, your tax rates are going to go down. Your tax rates are going to go down, and we get hit with uh, you know I'm going up a thousand dollars on one of my properties next year. So I think that's totally misleading. I, 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 and like I said, I find it offensive. And even in your statement tonight, saying that you guys arranged it to save money, there's no money being saved. It's a direct effect of the home values in this market. Well, I do know that when the board, when the task force developed the dollar amounts that they were going to ask for, and they took them back to the board, the board said, we want to see a lower tax rate. And yes, the tax rate is an estimate, and it's based on assessed value. Assessed value has been increasing. The task force did look at, at the trend as to where it's been and what's going on, so they did build that in. We also looked at the current levy spending plan, and we said, what do we need if, if the cost of goods and services is inflated by 3% and salaries and benefits go up. What is the need? You're, you're not hearing what I'm saying. No, I, 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 I get that we need $27 million. Mm -hmm. I get we need $24 million. I get that. But you're going out there. The main talk on the levy right now is about the tax rate going down. We every haven't, place, every we place haven't you go, said that it's a tax cut. I, I understand you haven't said, but the way it's being communicated on your, on your, on your flyers, on your brochures, like I said, every mom I'm coming into, hey, you know, we got to pass this levy. I'm going, yeah, we got to get this figured out. And they're going, the tax rate's going to go down. The tax rate's going to go down. And the tax rate is going to go down, but the cost is going to be the same. If not, if what happens if uh, if we have another 2007? We got chances of another bubble happening. 2019 tax rates plummet or the assessments go down. Then you're going to be back up to two dollars and thirty cents. Nobody's saying that. This is all based on projection. And to sell it off of this is wrong. And I'm saying it's wrong because it's going to cost us when we go back out to get a bond. So we should be communicating exactly what this thing is and what it's for. And people aren't going to have a problem with that. But they're going to remember. They're going to remember. They told me, that board told me, my rate was going to go down. My assessment was going to go down. Or my, uh, my, my taxes were going to go down. That's what they're hearing because that's what everybody's running around town telling them. So, so if we hear you correctly, and I think I heard you say, yeah, I understand it's going to go 23, 24, all the way up to 27, and we made estimates, but if I hear you correctly, the issue is more that you're concerned about is communication, and so how do we clarify that communication? Would it help as we go forward, we have to problem solve, because we want clarity. And I'm trying to figure out how we balance those, because 
the board also was working with a levy lid and they chose to go under the levy lid that the state allows, which okay, is a positive. That's not, that is not the... But, but what you're saying, would it help if we attach some of those, what the annual amount is that goes along with those projected state Well, what would help is if you clarify the statement, which said the assessment is going down, I mean, the, the tax rate is going down because of the assessed values increasing. Do not expect that your tax bill is going to go down with this levy. This is not a lower my tax bill levy. And most of the people out there talking and communicating are thinking it's a lower my tax rate or my tax bill levy. And uh, and I think that is going to kill you guys when you come back out and say, let's pass a bond. And I'm going to be the first one standing up and say, hey, we told you so. And uh, and I, I think you, you, we've got time. You guys better turn that around. You better let the parents know. The teachers are in the school saying, hey, tell your parents that their tax rate's going to go down. That's crazy. And I want a bond pass. I want new schools. I want better schools. I want better facilities. I want better managed money. I want it all. But we just came out of 25 years of not trusting the board. And uh, this right here is going to cost this board not to be trusted. Trusted. So uh, that's, that's one of the issues I, ha I have with it. And, and I am not opposed to a levy. I think it's important. But I think this is a little thing. This is, this is a no-brainer. This thing should just be a no-brainer for this community to pass. But if it passes and their tax assessments go up, you will never see money come out of this community again. So you better shift the, the communication on it. The other problem I have is on your last statement where you said this was not a, uh, can you jump to the, uh, to the final screen? You said that this was not a, uh, an excess levy. Well, the way it's currently written is, is an excess levy. Because the way it's written right now, it says that if the state jumps in and pays money towards the district, gives the district more money, this board gets to decide whether they reduce that or not. I've never seen a public entity on their own go, yeah, we don't need that money. So this is an excess levy. No but you haven't, you haven't funded basic ed yet. So I, I, we got, I, I, so we got, we got money this year from the state, right? No, but well, we're the, still not up to basic ed. The, 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 so we should return that money to the taxpayer even though we're still not getting basic ed funded? I, I am saying the way this levy is written, is that the monies coming in from this levy are to pay for this 24 percent correct okay which is basic ed that's basic ed right. that's what the voters are for is to vote for a levy to fund 24 percent so what happens next is the state jumps in they're obligated to fund it there's going to be money in the next four years from that state into this school district Based on what I heard today, based on what I, I, I'm hearing. What to fund I, basic ed. To fund, to, to increase the amount of basic ed. I don't think we'll cover the whole 24%, but if it covers 10% of it, the decision should be made right now if that 10% is going to go back to the to But the then that would still leave us, if we got 10% of our basic ed funded from the state, we have 14% still left to fund from I, the I understand ed. that. But the 10% should not be collected after that point. It's going to fund basic ed. Why not? Where are we going to get it from? Okay, let me slow down. He's saying <laughs> well, the state. And I understand <laughs> what you're saying. But I understand. And we may not have a choice. If the state, uh, in theory, the state should be okay. funding all of it. The state has no money. I, I understand. So okay. There's a very good likelihood okay. that it's funded right. There's if they do start things, to fund it. Two different things. The way the levy's written <laughs> right now, it says if the state during this period of time gives the school money, the board has the decision whether they want to keep the levy coming in with no accountability for those dollars. Because it's not covered in any of this documentation, it's not covered in anything. That's the way that the levy is currently written. And, uh, and I, I don't think, I think this community wants accountability from the board, from the schools, to, to get back in this place so we can pass one of these bonds. You know, if, if we say, okay, funded it, next year this, they fund all 24% of it, $24 million come in unallocated, board gets to do whatever they want with it. I think a lot of people in this community have a heartache, a heart, 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 uh, have a problem with that. And, uh, and I think the board should say, it either 
on this levy, if we get this covered, because that's what the levy's for, then we can uh, we can reduce that that assessment. Because if you need more than that, then you need to explain to the community why you need more than that, and say this is where those excess dollars are going to go to. Paid for this is going to get paid for. This is going to get paid for. This is going to get paid for. But do not let us think that we're writing another blank check to you so that you guys get to decide where it's going. I, I, I don't think I'm, I'm being super crazy thinking that there should be some accountability now. No, you're right on because what that asks for is the capacity to tax those amounts annually. Yep. It doesn't ask for a tax rate, it asks for to tax those amounts annually. And what the board has said is when, if and when the state increased funding, we'll review that and some of that comes along with as the state increased funding we've got a there's some strong consideration that that will come with some rules and there's probably going to be some parameters around that and what they've said is we've got some priorities and we'll review these and that's what that statement says the one thing I would say is as they review those if I recall correctly that the, all that review will be done through several public forums such as this and so we would really if in fact they increase funding and in, if in fact the parameters give us room to do that uh, I believe it was the intention of the board and I'm looking a little bit at Chuck to recall what that is because when you adjust the levy spending plan you have to go out and do some public forums that's where the board at that meeting at Vaughn Elementary actually listed what their priorities will be if in case that happens and how what filter they'll use but we you know times change if that happens two years from now um, maybe those priorities have changed and we definitely want to draw and I hate to speak for the board but I think at that point they'd really want to have those problems all I'm saying is say that input. don't say that it that there's a chance so you're saying there's a chance that my rate will go down you're leaving that open and, and that's another place where this community has constantly had uh, issues with the board because they get money then they spend it the way that they want or they lead it in a way that they want I think uh, transparency is really important, but there's one point I'd like to make about that. So let's say just, I'll give you a scenario. Let's say the state gives us $5 million for technology next year above what they gave us this year. And they also give the teachers a 5% raise. Though they don't fund all of our staff. You saw 24% of our staff are funded by the levy. So we have, to, we have to provide the raises for the other 24%. So if we were to give back the taxpayers the $5 million for the technology, we would be digging somewhere to find that money to fund the rest of our staff. So I think it, we it, need to be so you're saying that money is not in the levy right now? What I'm saying is when, like, uh, so like Governor Inslee went forward and said he, he supports a teacher raise, okay, what he didn't say, and this is why Randy Dorn stormed out of the meeting, was that they don't fund all of our teachers. When the state funds our teachers, they only fund a portion of them, and we're expected to backfill for the rest. Okay. Okay. If, you, if you know that, why aren't you asking for it? Or we put don't it know. We don't know what the legislature okay. is Well, uh, or explain that that is happening. Right. And I agree. We need to explain that. Hey, because I, I, yeah. again, the community Sorry. feels that this state is going to fund the schools more than they're funding now, and the way that that is written, I mean, the 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 the, the, the statement is one paragraph long, and the bottom point is. We get to decide what we do if we get money from the state, and and and, and that's. But well, you're right. What John's talking about is, even this year as an example, they gave some cost of living adjustment. In that they don't fund all of our teachers. That actually ended up, and it was well deserved for our teachers, but that actually ended up being a bigger burden to our levy dollars than helping us out because we had to backfill some of that. But you're right. right. We need to explain that too. To the public, yeah. so they understand why we're having to dig in. And, and, and again, I, I don't have a problem with the levy. Yeah. What well, I have a problem is I want this community to trust the school board to make advancements and move things forward. Where we've seen for a while that that hasn't happened, and the trust out there on the street isn't there. And and when I see this, and I hear the people talking about it, and they're sending sending right back down the same path that's been going for the last. 40 years you know it's uh, if you can't trust it you're not going to vote for it well and I think the idea of, uh, all that's based on aggregate um, assessed value and I think some of that that went in I'm not making an excuse I'm yeah. just getting my head going 
with the amount of new construction going on, we're hoping that that aggregate, get, and it was a pretty, uh, pretty conservative estimate of aggregate assessed value over the years. So I hear exactly what you're saying. What, what my you rate's think? going down, but my taxes aren't changing because the amount's going up. But we're hoping some of that, uh, you know, one, one thing is some you, things that drive that down is some of the new construction. One thing that you don't see is the percentage of seniors that are taking their senior deduction. Last year was the highest uh, number of senior uh, exemptions on taxes that we had. So we have homes that were five, six hundred thousand dollar assessments drop down to $125,000 assessments. And it takes three new houses to catch up for those dollars. So even though there's new houses going up, there's uh, there, the, the, the actual total for the county of assessed value will be pretty much the same. That's why, that's why we're seeing these big assessments hit right now. Uh, because they're, they're, they're concerned about that. And they want their money. Yeah. You guys want oh, yeah. your money. Oh, yeah. And I think your numbers are, are correct in what it's going to take to get to it. But you're, you're, you are doing a horrible job. Not you. What is getting out to the people and what these teachers are saying, what the families are saying, is going to cost you. Thank you. I mean, we want to clarify communication as much as we can. So if it's if it's not clear, it's good that we get that feedback. I think one of the things that we want to make sure people are still hearing too is that it's still the lowest tax rate in the county. I, I don't think that's what nobody has a nobody nobody's nobody's having a problem with the tax rate. That's not what you're hearing. The the hearing is how they're trying to sell this levy based on tax rate. That's what you're hearing out there. And and that's where the and that's where you're gonna because they say your the tax your tax rate's going down. Most people say, okay, I'm gonna get my tax bill next year, 2017, and it's gonna be less. Surprise, it's gonna be up 12, 14 percent. So So what you're saying is what they're saying is accurate, but there's more to the story. There's a lot more to the story. Well they need to make it clear yeah. that it's per thousand dollars for that two bucks of assessed value. And most, and then they use an example of two hundred thousand, and there's very few houses that are valued at two hundred thousand, at least in the main good cover area. So that's an issue. That, and I picked on the same two problems that I picked up um, that he discussed too. And um, another question I had: Does Apple still fund or help schools buy computers and things? No. No. They, they did for a while. They gave um, teachers who went through the Apple training got mm -hmm. computers. Those weren't for kids. Those were for teachers. Um, those computers, yeah, that that program has been just that's gone. Yeah. We've done some with the safety, the things that we're putting in place for safety. We have been able to get some grants mm -hmm. um, that relate to that, and so we, whenever we can, we try to utilize and try to look for multiple sources. So that no, we're not just dependent on one source, um, but there are some areas where we just we can't get enough grants, or we can't get um, a grant for to help us with that. We do um, have some safety grants that we've mm -hmm. been able to it's secure. A lot of money for obsolete technology. <laughs> what is your EOL on the computers that you're purchasing right now? In the light. Yeah. I'm looking back at Mr. I'm Stark because at we, he, would, he would then know more than we would. Well, I mean, you can look at it in different ways, but um, we still have computers from the 2003 bond that are at the end of their circulation or their use. Uh, let me, re let me have you phrase my question. What do we, how do we budget you for it? purchase a new computer today? Five years. Five years, yeah. it's going to stay? Okay. Mm -hmm. So that's what the so that's we're what trying the to create is. that okay. cycle that we're yeah we include a small cycle. amount in the price in order to extend the warranty and warranty it ourselves okay. and the dropping costs of Chromebooks um, which are are very useful for our students those are for three years yeah we warranty the Chromebooks for three years but those are much less expensive devices so yeah so that's been really helpful and on a card. You don't have to remake a classroom with the wireless infrastructure. And, and I remember Mr. Toby is now the principal here, but I remember years ago it was like, hey, we need more computers, let's get a lab. 
then you all have to walk your kids into the lab and you're fighting for lab space. Let's get them mobile so we can wheel them into your regular classroom and, and have more versatility. I've got no problem with technology. Yeah. It's just a question. Uh, I read, and I, I want to clarify, that one of the, one of the uh, uh, maintenance items was new turf on the field. Oh, I read that. Yeah. That's not no, part of this. that's not on the schedule. We have to maintain our our fields and we have to keep them up. But at this point in time, we are we are not scheduled to replace the turfs. We know that it's coming; it's pending. Um, we have to test them every year, um, and at this point, we have some concerns about the turf field at PHS. But it's for um, more of a separation. Um, of the lines and we're trying to look for um, options of how we can repair those pieces and keep the turf going. It won't be too much longer though. That's, that's, so. that's been there for and so 13 we're years. ways I think. that we can do that over time. So one of the questions is uh, of the fields that we rent out to our soccer club, yeah. uh, what percentage of the time are non-school uh, use of those fields versus school use. Is the field used 60% of the time by non-athletic or is it by 40% non-athletic? Boy, that'd be tough percentage-wise. Um, well, we're paying the light bill. I mean, I'm, I'm driving by here all the time and it's not schools. Yeah, and we, we actually yeah. charge more on our community yeah. use rate when the lights go uh, on. Right. So, so we charge but, but the my question is, increase. what percent of money are we recouping that goes back to maintenance? Not just to keep the lights on, but are we collecting enough from the, the outside entities using the fields to not only cover the cost, but to that portion of the, of the, uh, of the uh, replacement cost? Because the wear and tear is, most schools are yes. not collecting for wear and tear as well as maintenance. And we, we talk to community groups about looking at that um, because we have to make sure that we are recouping. We, we do recoup a little bit, but not, not that much. But we do make sure that um, part of the cost of upkeep is charged to continue to use. Yeah, but that's the that's so, mistake that most school districts make, is not recouping the cost to replace because it, it wears out. Yeah. And it shouldn't be on the taxpayers to replace that nope. when the taxpayers are only using it 40 to 50% of the time. Yeah, I don't know if I can give you a percentage, but generally we try to get our sports teams off of there by six. Yeah. Um, anywhere between 5.30 and 6.30, but we try to really push them to say, you need to be off by really no later than six and turn it over at that point. That being said, um, if there's games, um, the school games will take priority, so we may have to bump somebody because- I, I just think uh, what I'm asking yeah. is, what percent of the time are there non-school right. activities using the turf, yeah. using the fields? I don't know that we can give you a percentage. I, I don't right want it right now, but I think somebody should look into that because yeah. As I look down some of these maintenance items, and that's where I saw the replacement of the turf, uh, we're on some of these maintenance, high high level on the maintenance list, which I don't see the money in there to fund it, uh, and and I think that needs to be addressed. Well, and the cost should be shared by both entities. Mm -hmm. I mean, why should the field sit empty yeah. for 50% of the time? It's yeah, you're right. Every used. Well, they're they're used hard. Hard. They get, they're they used and hard. and they're used probably harder than when we have a, a teacher out there monitoring the or a coach out there monitoring the use of them. Uh, you come out here on the weekends and see how hard they're being used. And if we're not collecting enough money to replace them, and uh, anyway, that's it. I, I saw it on the it was one of the top five items on the maintenance list. So there was assumptions that that this was to be used on it. And again, that's one other thing I'd like to see is. Of the eighteen million dollars a year that you have for maintenance items, mm -hmm. uh, 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 last year we were told we had two schools about ready to fall on the ground. Uh, Ardell Purdy was so overpopulated that we couldn't keep the door shut on it. Uh, now I'm hearing there's no problems in the schools, or what is the what, what is, is the, the 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 maintenance list? Well, we still have issues with Ardendale. Um, we've got leaky roofs. Roofs come first, so we're making sure that... I, I don't even know what they are. Yeah. I really wish you would put them out there to the public so that they know where this money's going to. 
I'm just asking you the questions that, that the public's going, yeah, you know, there's a lot of moms at Ardenville that aren't happy because of that, the last bond didn't pass. And if they don't see, you know, this new levy, they're out there cheering to get it going and get it passed, that they're gonna get some reprieve on, maybe they're not gonna get it, but they should know whether they are or they aren't, they can get reprieve on some of their facility issues. Well, they're minimal. It's, it's not enough that we can put and replace Ardenville. That it's not a capital venture. Well, yeah, you're talking about connecting this to specific and I projects. And I yeah, I'm, just saying, I'm just saying, throw, here's what we can do with this. Yeah, yeah. Here's, and, that's, that's what I'm hearing from you is let's connect this to some specific projects, yeah. which I get that. And, and then I say, about, yeah. turn around and show the community that you did what you said you were going to do, and then ask for a bond. Any other questions? Again, I appreciate the input because we want to be as clear as possible as we can. Uh, I'm just thinking about the maintenance thing. I mean, that would be great to connect those and then something else, we, we blow up an HVAC system and that goes on the back burner while we fix the HVAC system. And as long as we communicate that, then people would understand. But, but it's, it's money, $24 million disappeared. 7.2% I think is for facilities. And just be accountable for what the 7.2 percent we spent, and, and I think that's what, and, and and put it out there. When I call the district and I say, hey, you know, what do you what do you spend money on? What's going on? It's like, okay, we'll get back to you. I'll give somebody a note, and they'll get back to you. Never get back them. So uh, it's. Uh, I also like to know, on a separate note, what the plan is for the. Uh, continued expense of the retired teachers in this district. That, that that number is is dramatically going up each year, which is pushing into this number. I'd like to know what the board's plan would be. Don't have to tell me today. I think the community would like to know what the board's plan is for, for that and how that's going to be offset. If it is, and if it's not, tell us it's not going to be offset. Here, you can address that. Um. Well, we pay retirement into the state, um, and so it's a state obligation. We do have um, the actuarial actuarial information um, that is um, part of our financial notes each year, um, and the I have tried to decipher that the so note <laughs> for that has changed, but. Our, we don't have anything outside. So of the, the district doesn't have a, <coughs> the district doesn't have, have a retirement obligation. obligation. I, right. I, I it's a state obligation. I, we don't fund that. You're, you're hearing me wrong. I'm not asking for answers. I, I, I think we need to. This, this is taking up a chunk of our budget. And it's not, no, it's not. It's not costing us anything. So we're not paying any money. Not for teachers. When well, teachers retire, they, they are covered by the state. Yeah. Okay. We fund them through we a regular pay, pension we plan while they're right active. Now employment. into the state. The money that we're paying into the retirement plans and the medical plans, correct. That has gone up. Oh well, yeah, definitely that's gone okay. up. But it has that's nothing okay. to do with retirement. I, I understand. So well, I thought you said retire. Phrase the word oh, okay. incorrect. I thought you said retirees. Uh, so. I think the community needs to know that those expenses are going up, which is pushing this absolutely piece of yes. Absolutely. Yes. absolutely. And uh, it's a and huge issue. Re retirement yeah. rates have, yeah. have gone into the double digits uh, for, for, huge for employers. Uh, I believe, based on what I read in the in the budget, uh, it was compared to four years ago, it was up 37 percent in the last four years. Yeah. Okay, so that's a that's a big that's huge. That's huge. So, thing to emphasize. That's really so again, not knowing where these I, I'm yeah. going into looking at it. Yeah, no, that's nobody, 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 not it's, me, it's kind of like are. it's kind of like non-teachers, people outside of the public education system, see their medical benefits going up yeah. at the same rate. So we have the same costs right. that everybody has, and that's a huge impact. But, but that, 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 that rate is going up, and there's nothing we can do about it. Okay, that needs to that needs to show that's where those dollars are going. Yeah. So and, and it, it's yeah. not it's not clearly being shown. That that's these we're this pie's getting bigger because we have these other major expenses that are increasing. We're not just wasting money. Tell us what you're not wasting money. We just want to hear you're not wasting money because the budget the, the the dollars go up dramatically every year, and the only way we can find out is to go sit in there and dig through the budgets and find out what they were, then try to find a couple years ago and find out where the dollars are and where they went to. And, 
it, so it, it's we, not easy. Yeah, when we talked about those certificated costs, you're saying when we talk about the certificated costs being salaries and benefits, you're saying if you're obligated to pay some of those benefits, let us know that because that is taking a chunk of things. Yeah. And it's not that you guys are making a choice to pay those benefits or whatever. It's a, it's a it's an expense. And it was this much a year ago, it's this much now, and we anticipate it to be this much down the road. Just be honest, communicate it, mm -hmm. and it'll help people think and feel that they know what's going on here. Yeah. Not, hey, you guys are gonna get a big tax break. That's that's the it's about communication. How do you communicate when you do, other than the gateway, which probably only 10% of the population gets? You know, we, have, um, we have a few different mechanisms. Um, we've actually just this year, kind of in response to that same sort of thing, is there was no way to um, blanket communicate with everyone. We've started a Compass newsletter. You probably already see, received one, and hopefully you'll get another one tomorrow. It was um, mailed on Tuesday, and it's sort of just broad communicating to our entire community understanding that not everyone has kids in school so it's that that basic kind of information um, we also put things on our web page we do social media we do facebook and twitter and um, i would love to hear from you and um, talk about ways that that would be most effective to communicate this kind of thing um, sometimes when we're in the system we feel like oh my gosh everything's been laid out there it's in the, at the board meetings it's in the minutes and we we think we're doing it and we're not <laughs> okay <laughs> yeah. so yeah. so there's seven people now that maybe whoever's watching online is is aware a little more aware yeah under understood but we're we're very open to I mean, what we want more than anything is for people to understand as much as those of us who are in it do and when it's clear that's not the case we're very open to to um, ways that would be good mechanisms to do that, and I don't know that we figured that out yet. Well, in the private sector, there's a budget that's that thick, and then there's a summary budget that goes out, and it's like where are the dollars going? There's 12 categories in it, and to read through your guys' budgets, I mean, you have to be a CPA to, to read through your yours, and and it almost looks sometimes misleading in there because it shifted. You guys shift whatever you were itemizing something last year shifted it to some other category this year then you got okay that one's up 12 percent but that one's down 12 percent so uh it, it would just be nice to to know where the dollars are going and that gets trust and, and i would like you to think about modifying the statement or the board coming out with an address of the statement on that the board gets to decide what they're gonna do with the dollars if there's money from the state. Most of the people feel that the state's gonna give money to it and uh, to the district and the sentiment is, well, if the state's gonna give money, why, why would we pass this levy? So uh, mm -hmm. I think you guys should come out and address that quickly. Uh, because it's written right now, I will not vote for the levy with that written that way. So that's uh, that's where I'm at. Thank you. Quick comment okay. to address this issue here. Um, I, I attend pretty much every board meeting that there is, and uh, I've seen you. <laughs> I, 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 frequent, I frequent. I think I have a feeling. I've never. I don't know who you are, but I have a feeling we, we share a lot of thoughts. Um, I kind of actually like the ambiguity in the levy language in allowing the school board to review uh, and make a make an adjustment downward, if possible. If if the uh, state were to fund more than we're getting right now, I kind of like the ambiguity because the first year that the board isn't reasonable with that uh, power that they have is the year that. Uh, I like I like the idea of seeing what the board's going to do because I think that will go a long way in reestablishing credibility within the community. I, I would agree with that, but what would have to come out is a statement that says, "Here's what we're going to do with those dollars we give." Just to just to say, we're not going to decide later what we're going to do with those dollars. I'd like to know now. I'd like all those dollars to go so, into the. But we don't know what those dollars are. That's well, the I, that's the big thing. Ten dollars. No, I want to go but, into the but that's the whole thing. We don't know what. We, we See, when, when the state gives us, gives us dollars, 
sometimes it comes with very specific strings attached. And so if you if you say that if we get ten million dollars from from the state, then we'll give ten million back. It may be ten million that's earmarked for something very specific, uh, and that ties I'm not saying you can give ten million back. Yeah. I'm just saying, what are you going to use dollars for? Say now that the dollars are going to go into 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 the uh, uh, maintenance yeah. portion of the levy. We don't well, have enough there, information. We do currently oh, wait, wait, have with, a levy Without being spending specific, plan. the board actually aligned. It started at five, and then it was at ten. I think it settled at seven or eight. I'd have to look at the cover sheet. But without being specific as to what the projects are, they did align a certain number of priorities and said, here's the filter we're, we'll use. And, and the ambiguity is interesting. The strings, you never know what's going to be there. And so there may be some flexibility. As you talked about also, um, and we talked about, you know, we talked a little bit about the COLA that the, gave, that the state gave this year. I've heard people say, oh, you've got all this money, but what they didn't realize is some of that money caused a bigger burden on our levy because we had to backfill some of that for all of our employees. So how to, how to make all of that clear is something we'll have to look at. And, and we don't want to be so precise that we say we're going to do X, Y, and Z, and then we can't follow through things. on that. But yeah. Give me 40 things. You know, just, I just want to feel I know yeah. where these, there's not going to be, you know, some new piece of property purchase with yeah. money. There's not going to be, you know, something done that the uh, voters well, currently, can talk about. Currently, we have a levy spending plan for all four years of what we're going to do and where that money is going to be spent. And that's on our district website. Yep, yep. but that does not account for if additional dollars come in. We and won't get any more additional dollars. He's talking about what, the state. What happens the is state. if, the state, the, state. Come, if yeah. the state does provide, then we'll be looking at are there things that we don't need to do? And we uh, can be transparent about what, what it is that if the state gives us some money, we need to be transparent about what it is that that really means. What, what obligations do, are we tied to? Right. What do we have to backfill, if anything? I, I, I think, think that's, that's a reasonable that's request an annual that we're thing that we'll have to do on an annual basis as we find out each year what's going to happen with the state funding. And I don't know that it's something that we can go out and say, if the state gives us more money, this is what we're going to do. Because we don't know at this point if there's going to be strings attached to that state money or if it will, um, or if we will be forced to reduce our levy lid and levy dollars that we can't collect, we don't know what that's going to look like at this point in time. I think that's why we built the language so that we could make the statement, the board wanted to make the statement, that we had an obligation to go back and look, depending on what happens with the clery, and if the state does come through and fully fund basic education. Because right now, so much of our levy is for basic education that in theory, if the state funded basic education, we wouldn't need to be doing those things. And there would be excess dollars. Are you familiar with the priority list? I think uh, there was a cover sheet that had a priority list with, with that as well. And again, it wasn't 40. It was, I, I can't remember, it was seven or eight, which, you know, yeah. Was it nine? I think it was nine too. Huh. So, so what you're saying is a little more clarity beyond those nine uh, uh, just, priorities. I, mean, I, I, no. I get what you're saying, yeah. And, and we have to be clear about if we, the worst case scenario would be they give us more money, reduce the levy lid, but the money that they gave us would actually come with additional burden to us to, to backfill some things. But that being said, the best case scenario is they give us more money without any strings attached. So what are you going to do then? Are you going to collect that 24 million, 25 million, 26 million? If you do, how are you going to spend it or are you going to reduce it? I think that's where a lot of the, you know, even looking four years down the road, there's a lot of what ifs. And so I think maybe addressing some of what you talked about with those priorities along with the public forum, um, if big, money comes in. Priorities. I, I think they'll, uh, my personal opinion, I think they'll fund the uh, good portion of the educator, the, uh, the education dollars. And I think there's there will be a windfall. And that's why I said this is an excess levy. This is not a, it, and, and it should be indicated uh, as an excess levy. And they, those, some of those big ticket items that say, we're gonna do these. If we get the windfall, if we this is an excess levy, these are two items that we're gonna make sure that we get done. 
and they should be done before you come back and ask for more money. So it's, I mean, it's, and again, I don't, I don't mind if the school has it. I just don't want to be out there having these conversations every time they want more money, every time they want bonds. I, I, it should be way easier than it is right now. So I'm, I'm just here to try to help you make it easier. Yeah. When the state evaluates their basic education funding that they're going to do, do they look at each individual school district and say, how are you spending your money? Or do they tell you, we're going to give you $10 million and because we think that's enough for Peninsula School District? Well, I know it's probably much more It's, it's a lot more complicated. <laughs> yeah, I'm just yeah. curious. It's a lot more complex. Yeah. Um, but they have an obligation to fully fund, it's a paramount duty that they fund fully fund basic education and that's their charge at this mm -hmm. point in time. And, and of course Randy Dorn might be the person or whoever's in that position that would um, give the legislature that information. Well as far as what yeah. and the point I was trying to make earlier and I don't know if I did it very clearly was when you look at the the 24 percent and the 76 yeah. percent that total 100 percent does not according to the legislator's definition define that's not enough for basic ed. Mm -hmm. Uh, I'll give an example. I told I said the state funds zero teacher training days. We managed to get in pay for about three teacher training days. Mm -hmm. The basic ed law in, in Olympia that they passed says teachers should get 10 training days. So even what we already have it, it, there is not, and they have till 2018, so they're, they, but what the, the court is saying is they're not making progress fast enough to get to that target. They're fining them. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's doing a lot of good, which comes out of, yeah. It's not coming out of their personal accounts. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I, I think everybody can agree by the time this levy is over with, the state's going to be funding portions of this educational program. As a taxpayer, what are you going to do with the money? Because the way it's written right now, it says that you guys get to decide with, with, with no, no strings attached to decide what, what happens with those dollars. So in all likelihood if the state does give us more funding for basic ed in all likelihood we will be forced to collect less of a levy we will be forced to wow why would you say that I instead of telling people their taxes are going because it's not we don't, a we don't know sure. we yeah. don't know but that's <laughs> in all likelihood we, we can we can again the reality, I'll, tell you, yeah. I'll tell you the people reality. would much that was the best statement you made yeah and, and I get it. I mean, it, but they're like they're likely, so and that's tough because they're likely so to ratchet that levy down. And here's part of the problem. Here's yeah. part of the problem is what resonates with you doesn't necessarily resonate with that person. I, 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 and so we're trying to send a, a clear message to as many people as we can, but we always have people that have the a better perspective, and we're more than happy to get those perspectives so that we can get the message out to everyone in the most efficient and the message you're getting out clear right now way. is uh, it's way past 7 30 so I'm, I'm <laughs> I, I just want to add something I, I mean, I'm not supposed to be talking but I'm going to add something because I think it's kind of interesting when the board came up with that one paragraph that you're referring to they actually had two choices in front of them one choice was if the state funds education, basic education and reduces the levy rates, the district will comply with the state requirements and collect less money. The other option that the board had was if the state funds additional money, the board will look at how much money they're collecting and reconsider, so the one that you talked about. And the reason they went with the latter was because there could be some situations where the state would give some additional money to the district but not reduce the levy rate, and that would allow the districts to take less money in even with that. So they kind of looked at, because I agree with you, I like the statement that you like, the one that she made. That was the statement that I preferred. And that says, if the state reduces the amount, if the state increases basic education funding, and they say to the local district, you can't collect more, then we won't collect more. And I like that statement. But what the board thought is, hey, that's a no brainer. You can't collect anymore if they say you can't. So we'd rather be more liberal and say that if they give us additional funding, we can on our own choose not to collect 
And that was the purpose of that second statement that they came up with, is to give the board the flexibility to say, if we're getting more money, whether the state allows us to collect more or not, we can choose not to. And that's the piece that, that Leo referred to, the ambiguity piece. That's the piece where there will be a really interesting dialogue among the board in an open public meeting saying, we got $3 million more from the state, so what does that mean for the levy? Does that mean $3 million that offsets what we were collecting from the levy and therefore we should reduce the levy by $3 million? Or does that $3 million mean we have more obligations in the levy now and so that's going to cause us some problems? Or does that $3 million mean a million of that offset what was in the levy? $2 million is for preschools programs and that's brand new with strings attached and we've never had that before. So we'll reduce the levy amount by a million. That's going to be a fantastic dialogue that's going to happen every budget year at board meetings. Uh, and that's why the board ended up with that second choice instead of the other choice. There's no other district in the state that I know of that has that written in. No. Mm -hmm. Most other districts are passing their levies. Yeah, we've actually been really successful. Well, I mean, our bonds are bonds and levies, so. You know, bond rates about, about 30% of districts pass bonds. 30 to 40% of districts pass bonds. But, cap, but uh, uh, educational programs and operations, maintenance and operations levy, we've been successful since 1999 in passing those. So, uh, and that's because it's a replacement. It's not a new tax. It's a continuation of an old tax. And so it's not on top of what we're collecting now. And it's a continuation of basic ed programs. Um, so our community has been really supportive of that. Um, but you're right. We have to make sure we communicate. We have to make sure we're accountable. We have to make sure that people know what we're asking for and how we're spending that money so it's going to good use. That's important. But it's an interesting dialogue to have about where the board ended up with the clause they ended up with because I think the intent was to make themselves even more accountable by that language than otherwise. Uh, I think that was really their intent. And so I think come this spring and summer when we're going through budget cycle and the state has given us $10,000 more, there will be a dialogue around that $10,000 and does that offset some things that the levy's asked for. And if so, let's reduce the levy by the $10,000. And to communicate that out, because if you're not Mr. Bundick and you're attending the board meeting to hear that dialogue, we need to find a way to communicate that out as to what occurred and, and what those things are. Because like you said, it's a great thing to have an open public meeting in a public forum. It's even greater to have it and have people come and attend and hear, hear the conversation that goes on. And so if they're not there, we got to find a way to get that word out. Thank you. In that it's 747, uh, we appreciate the input, and we hope, we hope you learned a little bit of something while you're here tonight, but thank you for the input as well. Have a good evening.